I think in every big constitutional or big political movement, there's always been art associated with it. And the Scottish independence movement is no different in that respect. What's interesting is that there seems to be lots of art associated with the drive for independence, but there's very little on the other side for the drive to stay in the UK. And I think that speaks volumes, um, actually, in the, the, the grassrootsness of the Yes campaign, the passion behind it, the, the will behind it, and the inspiration behind it as well. That's why we called this I Inspired. How it came about was really quite lo-fi. It was me and my sister Lindsay sitting at my mum's dining room table working out how we can do something for the Yes campaign because at that point we were a bit feared about canvassing or doing anything particularly political. We thought actually initially we would just do it based in Aberdeen and here we are three months later with 73 pieces of art. We were inundated with offers of artwork from people across Scotland and beyond. The exhibition is going on tour around Scotland with National Collective. We will be joining it in various points of Yestival. I'm a graphic artist, I suppose, here. The fact that there's lots of statements and um, words that go along with the referendum has been perfect for me because it's typography-based stuff that they've done. The thing that inspired me most of all to actually start doing something and be an active yeser was the death of Margot MacDonald. Um, and I did a lino cut of her called What Would Margot Do? And I, I thought, well, Margot is somebody, was somebody that just did what she felt was right. And the same theme, sadly, uh, one of my uh, literary heroes and my favourite novelist, Ian Banks, died last year. And he was also pro-independence. And there's not a day goes by when I'm reading something in the newspaper and I thought, what would Ian Banks have made of this? And I also did a line of cut of the Lewis Chessmen, um, saying the famous Gandhi slogan of first they ignore you, then they ridicule you, then they fight you, then you win. I've submitted a photograph to I Inspired, which is of my daughter Eve. And the reason why I've submitted it to I Inspired is because it's my kids as well that have inspired me to really get out there because I'm 45 and independence I suppose is coming midway through my life but it's coming at the start of my, my kids lives. My daughter's only 11. I wanted to put that picture up of Eve just to remind myself more than anything else who I'm doing it for. I also did for the very first time I suppose a little installation where I took a 70s typewriter and I've typed a letter from Scotland 1979 to Scotland 2014, effectively saying, didn't it be feared? I think the thing is that I find it insane that a country like Scotland doesn't govern it itself. I've always thought that, but in the last year, I've discovered things about our situation in Scotland, which I can't believe haven't convinced more people. Like, for example, the fact that we only get a percentage back in our block grant for the tax that we raise. I felt, right, we've got about six months just to convince as many people as I know that this is the right thing to do for Scotland. I wake up in the morning and I think, what can I do today to get the yes message out? So I've been blogging, I've been doing I Inspired, I've set up a Women for Independence in Aberdeen, I've been doing things completely out with my comfort zone. I think that the reason for the passion for independence on the in the Yes campaign, I think the main reason is that we're very positive about the, the opportunity we've been given. It's got to be grabbed and it's got to be fought for to a certain extent. We've got to fight past the project fear, we've got to fight past the doubts and the fear and we've got to embrace it and realise that yes it might be hard work, it will be hard work setting up a new country, but the, the benefits to be gained are, are massive.